Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we have joining us mortgage expert, senior loan officer, Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. Jenny is going to be joining us today to give us a status on the interest rates, where interest rates are currently, as well as talk about a rate lock. Do you know what a rate lock is or when you use it? Without further ado, let's get Jenny on to join us. Hi, Jenny. Hi, how you doing, Tracy? I'm great. How are you today? I'm good. Got a little thing going on here, going to the dentist later today. Oh. <laughs> so Look I've got no, yeah. no shame. Oh, no shame. Can't even tell. Can't even tell. But well, thank you for still joining us today, even uh you have a little bit of pain going on there, so we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So oh, what's going on? It's always a pleasure. So today, I think we're going to talk a little bit about interest rates, right? Just a current status of where are rates, um, and then talk a little bit about rate locks. Um, just, I think there's a lot of people out there, especially first-time home buyers that maybe haven't gone through the home buying or the mortgage process. They might not even know that there is such a thing as a rate lock, you know, what it is or when you use it. So. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I think the first thing we definitely should touch on though is, you know, with, with interest rates right now and what's, what's kind of happening um, yeah. for years, it's been kind of like, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling because people are, we're used to hearing, you know, interest rates are historically low, historically low. Right. Well, if you just entered the market in the last couple of years, um, you're one lucky duck, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> yes. rates were definitely yeah. Yeah. the lowest they've been. Right now, we're actually back to pre-COVID okay. interest rates. So mid to upper threes, you know, in the 30-year fix, still That's fantastic. historically yes. low. I know when I first was, you know, when I bought my first condo um, out of college, I mean, interest rates were eight and a half percent. So, I mean, when you're talking in the three range, that is a huge difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're still there. Um, but we'd also heard, you know, the interest rates are going to rise. The interest rates are going to rise. And yeah. pretty soon, I think everybody became numb to it. And suddenly, when the Fed is actually doing what they said they were going to do, right. which they, was They gave us plenty purchase, of warning, right? <laughs> exactly. But now that it's happened, they've stopped purchasing, um, you know, the securities we've seen the rates, you know, go up. Right. So, um, and that's really a good thing in all honesty, you know, for the market itself, um, inventory being a huge issue, right. Yes. As it has been, um, yeah. you know, the last few years, quite a people who were thinking about moving refinanced and decided to stay. Right. Yes. There's a lot of sellers that they probably, if they didn't have the uncertainty of what was going to happen, right? Because we had, um, I know you said interest rates are back to where they were pre-COVID. I can tell you that the real estate market is like it was in the first quarter of 2020, where, you know, we were saying spring is, spring is early, right? Like that busy mm -hmm. spring rush. Well, we're seeing that again now this year. Last year, not so much. It wasn't, I mean, it was busy, but this year it's just, it's even busier. So, um, yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely seeing that in the housing on that side of things as well. Well, I know, I know we want to talk a little bit more about rate locks themselves, right? The rates, it is what it is. You can never go back. You know what I mean? Buy right. Apple stock. I can't go back on teen years and buy right. it, you know, at the right time. Right. Um, we're dealing with what, you know, the reality is now. Yeah. And Present value. When, yes. Exactly. And when people get pre-approved. You know, many times the lender is going to show them a few estimates. They're going to quote a rate, and that is not the buyer's rate. Right. So maybe it takes them time to find a home, and, you know, they're talking to friends, family, or whomever, mm -hmm. um, and they're under the impression, like, that was their interest rate. Right. right? And, yeah, and there's a lot of buyers. Um, you know, I have lots of conversations with buyers and you know, especially first time home buyers where they, they shop for their loan officer, who they're going to work for based on the rate. And, um, you know, I always try to counsel them. That's, that's really not the best way to, to, to decide who you want to work with. You want to work with somebody who is looking out for your best interests, is going to be able to show you all the different scenarios. 
um, that, yeah. you know, that you have a good, you know, working relationship with because it is a relationship and you're, you're in it together, right? All of us, we're in it together for a while. So, and rates do change. So somebody might give you one rate and, and someone may give you another, but it, it really comes down to what, to, at what point, at what point does their interest rate get locked or become their rate? So that's a great question. Once a borrower goes under contract and has a you know, fully executed signed purchase agreement, mm -hmm. that's when they're able to go ahead and lock their interest rate in. Okay. Um, when it comes to rates, we won't get into, you know, points and fees yeah. and how those things yeah. work, <laughs> you know, for sure. But when it comes, you know, to locking in a rate on a $200,000 loan amount, for example, an eighth in rate is fourteen dollars a month. Okay, so on two hundred thousand dollars, an eighth difference in the rate. On two hundred thousand okay. dollars, um, is going to be on two hundred thousand. It'll be fourteen a month. Okay, so a that's quarter a is twenty eight dollars a month. Okay, now that's a month over you know right. the course of many times people think the thirty years. Mm -hmm. So it's it's rather nominal. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, and, that's a few Starbucks. Right. For those that drink Starbucks or whatever, you know, you might spend, you know, some people like their scratchy lotto tickets or whatever it might be like, that's really the difference. It's less than 50 cents a day. Yeah. Right. And, and many times, you know, lenders are going to be within an eighth or a quarter in terms right. of rate. So comfort level, you know, with a lender establishing a relationship um, is also, you know, those things are very important. Very but important. You know, people who are pre-approved, let's say, you know, six months ago, it's a good idea to, you know, reevaluate that yep. pre-approval yep. just to get in line with where the market's at yeah. itself. Um, you know, because, well, oh, well, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, well, not only that, I mean, a lot can change in six months. I mean, maybe you've saved more money, you know, maybe you got a raise. I mean, there's so many different factors, um, rate obviously being one of them. So, yeah, definitely checking in. Um, I know you said for the rate lock, so once they once a buyer has a fully accepted purchase agreement, they know, okay, this is going to be my house, um, that's mm -hmm. when they have the ability to lock in the rate. But what is, is there a cutoff? Like you have to lock it in by this point in the process. Okay, well, typically you've got to lock, I would, for us, at Ross Mortgage, it's typically 10 days before your contract end date because the underwriter, we all have to know what is, how does that affect what we call your debt to income ratios? Right. How does that affect your payment? So many times folks will, um, you know, they look to us for advice and some guidance on what the market's doing. And, you know, if I had a crystal ball, I'd be a rich woman. <laughs> right. Yes. And everybody's got a different relationship with money, right? right. Yes. Some people are more risk takers yes. than others, yep. for example. I'll, my advice is if you like it, lock it. Okay. Okay? Yep. Because when, when you lock, you are guaranteed to not close at a rate higher okay. than what you're locking in at. Right. Okay? Yep. And that's important to remember, right? Like, once you lock, that's your rate. You have yep. it. Doesn't matter if rates go up, like you have locked it in. Exactly. It's a double edged sword, right? Sure. Because people many times to say, well, what if they go down? Can we change? Well, right. you know. Right. In Vegas, when you, you know, if you, you go and you place a bet and then you see what the winning number is, can you go and say, wait, wait, no, I really, I really wanted to be on that one. No. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, you know, Policy may vary from company, you know, to company. And what I mean by that is there would have to be a significant drop in interest rate sure. to consider a, a renegotiation is what we right. call it. So that's typically like a half point. Okay. And that's, and that's okay. really not where we're at right now, correct? No. With the current rate. So, um, mm -hmm. so I know we've um, seen rates come up a little bit, but like you said, they are still pre-pandemic. I mean, we're still in that range with it, which is fantastic. Um, your money still goes very, very far right now. So It does. And just another little bit of background. I mean, what happens when we lock a rate, just like when we are underwriting a loan or you're going through the loan process, there's so many things that are happening behind the scenes. 
we're essentially guaranteeing an investor that we're going to deliver to them a two hundred fifty thousand dollar you know loan amount, right? Same credit score, et cetera, et cetera. If rates moved an eighth, and somebody's like, "Can you change?" Well, I'm just one loan officer. So if there was twenty of us going to our lock desk over an eighth in rate, and we all had locked with you know a certain investor, mm-hmm. that investor is not going to um, be one of our clients anymore. Right. Well, and because that's yeah, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand, especially if you're newer to the process. And even if you're not, um, that there is a secondary market. So it's not just, you know, you're with Ross Mortgage. It's not like here, Ross Mortgage is giving you this money. There is an investor behind that is going to be involved in that as well. Exactly. So, and it makes sense. Like I said, a significant drop in rate that's where the market is and there's exceptions you know to every rule but a lock is just that we as our promise our guarantee that you will not close at a rate that is higher than what you've agreed to and so the borrower has the choice would you like to lock in now right or do you want to you know hey do you want to gamble right and well, see and, what the market brings. And I think that's where different personalities and different comfort levels come in. There are going to be some people that just want to know this is what my rate is going to be. So that means my payment will look like this exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, if you know, if that's your personality or that's what you feel most comfortable with, locking in as soon as you get that signed purchase agreement might be for you. If you're someone who's like, eh, you know what? I, I mean, I have one client that we talked about, you know, interest rates are kind of fluctuating. He's like, the amount that the rates are fluctuating or going to fluctuate throughout this year, he's like, it's so minimal. He's like, I'm not concerned, you know. So mm-hmm. so if you're from that state of mind as well, then, you know, then maybe waiting and just taking what it is, you know, when you get to the point where you have to lock in. So Exactly. It comes down to personal choice and yep. knowing what your options are at that time, right? right. Yep. Um, most people tend to be, they would be a lot, more ticked off right if the rates hopped up than if the rates went down right right um so like i said it's i can give advice i can give guidance but at the end of the day it's showing them the effect right of a moving rate and what it has on their payment and if they're willing to take a risk right and in this market um you know it's it's you know we're heading we're on a little bit of an uphill climb right? right right But $14, you know, a month or so hopefully isn't going to bump you out of getting the house of your dreams. Right, right. You know? Yes. It's, it's definitely not going to be a barrier for most people or most people, like, to get into a home. Um, so, mm-hmm. it, you know, and the, and the key is to keep in mind that, yes, we are. I know we've, it has been said for so long, but we are going to eventually see interest rates continue to come up. But it'll be a slow process. It's not going to you know, go from the three range, you know, to double that in, you know, in the course of a year. But, but gradually we are going to see changes, right? Exactly. But like I said, they're also good for the housing market Mm -hmm. in terms of getting, you know, sellers more inclined to list their homes and move along as well versus we had some people just buckle down and stay. Right. Um, But all indicators are um, it's still going to be a very, very good market in real estate over the next few years. And when it comes to mortgages, any questions people have, anything, ideas, something they want to bounce off of me, um, I'm here to help everybody and anybody in any way that I can. Yes. And we appreciate you, Jenny. And thank you for joining us and sharing some information on the current rates and what a rate lock is and when you should do it. So the bottom line is for your rate lock is if you like it, lock it, right? Well, lock it up. <laughs> lock it, That's lock right. it up. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you having us, be, joining us. And uh, thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next Tuesday on Tuesday. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Bye. Jenny. Bye.